Hi, girl. Filled with anticipation. I'm just going in to, to feed and check on my babies. Karen and Kevin Collins eagerly await the arrival of four new family members. Oh, how's the pregnant ladies? You want to come out and say hi? Mama Goats Gizmo and Oreo are both expecting twins. You're eating them too fast. Something Karen can relate to. What do you want? I don't have anything for you. Having previously had twins herself. Yeah, they're always... A handful. But five years ago, at the age of 37, Karen lost her ability to ever have a child again when she says a doctor forced her into surgically induced menopause without her consent. If I wanted to make that choice for myself in the future, I had that available to me and he took that away from me. Karen says in early 2018, she started having right side pelvic pain. She worried it might be her chronic endometriosis resurfacing, which had resulted in the removal of her right ovary and uterus by her gynecologist. He did wind up removing the right ovary in 2016 as well. And at the time you were fine with that? Yes, I had agreed to that. It was clearly listed on my consent form. I had discussed it thoroughly with the doctor. But by 2018, she says a CT scan showed she could have chronic appendicitis. So she decided to have her appendix removed by a general surgeon. She also formed a plan with her gynecologist to have him participate in the surgery. Once he got in there, if he could visually see that there was an any endometriosis that was attributing to the right side pain that I was experiencing, that he would go ahead and, and and take care of that while he was in there as well. Prior to the surgery, Karen signed this operation consent form where she authorized her gynecologist to perform a da Vinci robotic laparoscopy, a possible firefly, and a possible lysis of adhesions. But when she awoke after surgery, she learned her gynecologist had removed her only remaining ovary. That's not what we discussed. It wasn't what was planned. It wasn't what I wanted to happen to me. And he made that decision without my permission. Karen suddenly stopped producing hormones, forcing her into immediate menopause. Within a few days of the surgery, the hot flashes, uh, the night sweats, of course that causes insomnia because you can't sleep through the night. You just feel kind of like you're losing your mind. Her husband says he immediately noticed a change. It's been traumatic. Um, before this happened, my wife was a very outgoing, uh, very social person. Um, obviously we have young children and since then she's had a hard time even, you know, interacting with our kids, our friends. So why did the doctor remove the ovary? After the family filed a medical malpractice lawsuit, the case went to trial in civil court. During testimony, Karen's gynecologist acknowledged it was not the plan to take that ovary, but because of the appearance of it and the two centimeters of necrotic dead tissue on the exterior of the ovary, he, quote, didn't feel comfortable leaving it in there. He also said he felt the condition that he saw needed to be addressed right then and there, though he admitted that Karen's life was not in danger at the time. But the hospital consent form Karen signed does say that during the course of the procedure, unforeseen seen conditions may be revealed that necessitate extension of the original procedure or a different procedure and that the signee authorizes and requests the doctor to perform procedures as necessary and desirable if deemed to be in my best interest. It's what makes her a woman and it was taken from her and it's not right. It should have been her choice. I felt violated. I felt someone that I trusted for so many years just violated me to, to a level where I, I really didn't know how to comprehend that. The jury ruled in favor of the doctor, but now Karen is pushing for legislative change. She wants a bill passed that would require women to be provided with information about what exactly will happen if they have their reproductive organs removed. And it would require doctors to obtain specific written consent for such a procedure. There would be no question. A woman would have to actually put it in writing that she fully understands what will happen um, if reproductive organs are removed, that she's been provided information about the risks and benefits, and that she provides expressed consent in written form. 
The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has a policy for how physicians should work with patients to obtain informed consent, but their policy states that absent a substantial public health justification, government should not interfere with individual patient-physician encounters. Now, a legislator in Indiana attempted to get an informed consent bill passed there last year, but it failed. Virginia delegate Bobby Orox says he is pursuing policy possible legislation after meeting with Karen Collins. Karen is also appealing the jury's decision from her civil case. I'm Melissa Hippolyte for CBS 6.